Welcome to the final day of the 2023 Advent of Code. So for today's problem, we have a bunch of machines wired together and some big red reset button. And so scrolling past the flavor text, it seems that we have to disconnect three wires and we need to disconnect at least half of the equipment. So we have a graph given to us in adjacency list format where each line represents a node followed by the nodes that it's connected to. And the connections are bi-directional, so they'll only be listed in one direction, but the edges are bi-directional. So we want to find three wires that we can disconnect to obtain two separate disconnected groups. So in this example, that's these three edges here. And once we get that, we'll have two disconnected groups with different sizes. And we want to find the product of the sizes of these groups. So I'll give a disclaimer here. This problem is completely reliant on a network-based package that basically just solves this for us. Um, I would love to give a solution that actually implements the logic and goes to it ourselves. Unfortunately, I'm really not good at graph theory. And so I genuinely cannot really think of a good way of doing this. I did find one approach that I will briefly explain, but I'm not going to show it because it's very much not a proper solution. So the idea is if we have a bunch of nodes, let's actually, yeah, let's just draw a random graph. So let's suppose we have some graph and let's say these are the three edges that we want to cut. And let's just say we have a bunch of nodes on both sides. I'm not going to draw them all out. So if we take every pair of nodes and run BFS to find some path that goes between the two, um, it would be a shortest path. And then we add one to the count of each edge along this path. If we do this for every pair, assuming there are sufficiently many nodes, the three most commonly used edges will be the three that are keeping the two components apart. Now, I don't really have a proof that this works, but it did work on the test input. Now, the problem is this is way too slow for the actual input, at least with my implementation. So what I did is I just added a random thing to randomly only apply this about 1% of the time. So basically for each pair of uh, nodes, there's, I, I forget if it was 99 or 99.9% .9 chance that we would just skip it. The idea being that with so many possibilities, there are about 25 million pairs of nodes. Sorry. Um, that's edges with about, yeah, well over a million, about one and a half million different pairs of nodes. If we just select a couple hundred thousand, statistically, it's probably likely that we'll be able to find the three bottlenecks anyway. So again, this is very much not a good solution. If I find a good solution on YouTube, I will link you guys to a different channel that explains this better. Unfortunately, all of the ones I can find are also just using graph libraries to trivialize this. And nearly every solution I could find in the advent of code mega, uh, solutions mega thread also basically just does the same. To do this problem, we're going to rely on a package known as network X. So it's not part of the standard distribution. So you will need to do sudo pip3 install network X. And of course I already have it installed, but you will hopefully get this working. And then what we'll do is this. So we'll import network X and then we'll create a new graph. Like, like this, I believe. And then for e we'll just read through each line and add the edges into the graph. So for line in open to zero, left, right equals line dot split on the colon. And then for each node in right dot strip dot split, we'll do g dot add edge left, right. And so in this case, we get a digraph with, that's not right. Sorry, this is meant to say node. We get a digraph with 15 nodes and 33 edges. If we run it on the real input, we have a bunch more nodes and more edges. And so 
The key part of this problem is finding a way to cut the graph into two components using three edges. So we can assume that the minimum number of edges required to separate the graph into two components is three, otherwise this problem would not make sense. And so then this problem just becomes, fi becomes find the minimum number of edges that we need to cut to separate the graph into two components, which is known as minimum edge cut. So if we call minimum edge cut on the graph, Um, we, we're supposed to get a list of three edges. Let me try this using graph and I'll just add in the reverse edges manually. Okay, so it just appears that I needed to not use digraphs. Um, let's see, if, as long as these aren't different, it's fine. Okay, so these are the same output, they're just not necessarily in the same order. Okay, so this will give us a set of edges that will cut the graph into two parts. And if we run it on the real input, it does take a bit of time to run, but we will also get a set of three edges. To remove the edges, we're not even going to need to do any of our own work. We'll just do g.remove edges from, which accepts any collection of edges. And now if we print out g, we see that the number of edges has gone down by three. If we run it on our test input as sorry on our real input as well, we have the same graph but with three edges removed. And now to figure out the size of the two partitions, once again we don't even need to do our own work. We can just do nx.connected components, which takes in a graph and outputs a generator of connected components. And so we get two sets of nodes, which are the two different disjoint connected components. And so since we're guaranteed there will be two of them, we can just print the length of them multiplied together. And so if we let this run for a bit, we get our answer. So once again, I apologize for this solution being just a composition of built-ins from a library, but unfortunately I'm simply not good enough at graph theory to figure out how to approach this myself. And I also can't find any other resources to point you guys to because basically every solution I can find, I either couldn't understand or does exactly the same thing that I did. There are also some clever solutions that use graph visualizers, but those aren't really programmatic, so I can't really submit them as code to my repository. And they uh, once again use built-ins where basically you just feed the, you just transform the input into a format that a visualizer can use, and they just look at the visualizer and find the three edges. It's also incredibly reliant on the visualizer showing you it in a nice format, which I believe Network X does do. If you input it into something like CS Academy's graph editor, which is what I usually use, first of all, the size of the graph would probably crash your web page. And second of all, the graph usually doesn't come out in any particularly nice format. And so it would take you forever to pick through and try to find those three edges yourself. As always, part two simply requires you to have the previous 49 stars. And once you do, you just push the button and get the 50th star. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this entire series. For those of you who celebrate it, Merry Christmas. And for everyone else, Happy Holidays. Thank you for watching.